What's going on, everybody? Landon here with, if you couldn't guess, again, Home Service Business Coach. And good to have you uh, wherever you're listening or watching from the podcast or YouTube. I got a good client, and I would uh, I would uh, venture to say friend. I'd venture to say good friend. Uh, Nick Presenhammer. Nick, how you doing today? I'm good, man. I'm good. How are you? Uh, awesome, buddy. Good. It's good to be speaking with you, as always. Um, the last time me and Nick, uh, how long ago was Nashville? A couple weeks ago now? Yeah, Nashville was a couple of weeks ago now. We were at the Huge there, and it was nice yeah. seeing a bunch of the guys from the program there. Yeah, totally, man. No, it's good Good to always catch up, good to see. We explored some of the nightlife, too. So there's a bit of as much as there's work, there's a bit of uh, <laughs> bit of play. Work hard, That's play hard, yeah. Exactly, brother. <laughs> so uh, I just wanted to hop on here, everybody, and kind of interview Nick, because Nick, when you were the guy, you still stand out my mind, how many questions <laughs> highly skeptical is this gonna work how could i trust you guys every question under the sun man um and just to see your progression man like dude like come on we'll, we'll get into that it's just been absolutely phenomenal to see nick not only grow his company but just kind of develop his mindset as well really shift from that technician to like the ceo and nick's gonna be crushing it uh, i have no doubt for decades to come so Nick, why don't you give the people what they want? Tell us a little bit of, you know, who the heck are you, man? Who's this kid? Like, wh where are you from? How old are you? What the heck got you into business? Just a little bit of background about yourself. Yeah, okay. So uh, I'm Nick. Uh, company's Gladiator Pro Wash. Uh, we're like just north of Toronto, so in southern Ontario, Canada. Uh, I'm 24, and I've been doing this for... I guess this is our third year as Gladiator, so about three years uh, with the company. Sweet man, awesome. And and uh, did you come? Because what I always like to ask this question: What got you into it? Like, did you come from a family of entrepreneurs, or you kind of trailblazing things from the front? Like, what the heck got you in? Like, hey, oh, I want to be a business owner. What 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 got you involved? Yeah, so I always knew I wanted to be a business owner. So uh, my dad he's owned businesses like all his life and he kind of told us like i got three siblings and he told us all like you can either go like the corporate route and like choose like a good job get a good pension it's a good life or you can go the business route and like there's a lot more reward with the business route but it is mm -hmm. a lot harder too so yeah. uh, you know telling someone that's young like that it's kind of like oh like i'd way rather the business thing and yeah and so yeah like just seeing him growing up was like no question in my mind. I definitely want to definitely want to pursue that. And, uh, and yeah, I've just always been motivated uh, to do that. Yeah. That's awesome, Nick. I love, love to hear that. Well, you, I think would be in a phenomenal position to what would be a, a piece of advice that you would give to someone who's looking to get into the home service space in general, some guys or some gals even listening, don't have kind of like the father figure or, or in, in mom and dad, like, Hey, I've taken this route. You can take either one, but like I, I started businesses. This is the route. Some people are like really battling not only their own mind, but like, what are other people going to think of me? My parents want me to get the city job, get the pension and work the nine to five. Man. Do you have any advice for somebody looking to get into the space? Yeah. Like it definitely takes a certain type of person, but if you have the urge to do it, then like, don't think you can't. I would say mm. like biggest advice is just do it. Like you just, you just got to do it and that you're never going to be ready, but like, it doesn't matter. You'll figure it out. And it's, yeah. it's crazy, but yeah, it, like as long as you just keep at it, it'll, it'll work out. Love that. Love that. Nick. Great advice. It reminds me of Ronnie Coleman. For those that don't know who Ronnie Coleman is, Nick, you know who Ronnie Coleman is, right? Of course. Yeah, of how, course. how can you not the king? <laughs> Uh, eight, what was the eight time? I think Mr. O, he says this line. It's so funny. There ain't nothing to it, but to do it. And I love that because mm -hmm. there ain't nothing to it, but to do it uh, right on your point. So Nick, get us up to speed, man. Kind of how were the first couple of years um, for you, man? And then kind of give us how business is going, you know, kind of, what are you doing? I see that you're out, out in the vehicle, man. You're looking clean. You got the clean polo on. It's nicely branded. Kind of how how is business going now, man? Do you have how many employees you got, man? You got an office manager, sales. How, how are things? Yeah, yeah. So, uh, 
like the start was was tough the first couple of years it's always tough like it's a grind i was doing all the work um and then yeah like the first year was it was brutal <laughs> second year <laughs> um we were able to to double and like it it sort of started to become a little bit more of a business but i was still very much like in the day to day in the truck and everything um and then this year we grew like we're going to we're on track to do like over double again. That's always sort of the goal, like double. I mean, you can't always do that, but, but yeah, yep. we, we've really expanded this year and it's been going great. Like we got uh, three trucks now. Uh, we have an office manager um, and then we have someone sort of in sales kind of uh, like, yeah, trying it out. Um, but yeah, just trying to like, just like Dave always talks about, just fire yourself from every position. And so yeah. that's sort of that's sort of what I've been doing. Like the last thing is kind of sales. So mm -hmm. I've just been trying to trying to work on that. But yeah, it's it's been going good. It's been uh it's it's been a big year so far. Like a lot of a lot of like mistakes, but uh also just like so much growth. So like I'm mm -hmm. super happy with where we're at. Yeah, absolutely, man. And again, like I'll I'll even touch on it yet again to see the progression. Um, cause when we first spoke, you were still doing the work. I think you had, and correct me if I'm wrong. I think you had two guys with two, you. Two, two, three, like, yeah, yeah. pretty much two. It, it wasn't, it was kind of, and there were summer students and like, yeah, it wasn't very long. It wasn't like full-time positions sort of thing. Yeah. Yeah. But, yeah. And then, and now if we fast forward almost a year, year later, I mean, you got the ops, you got two crews, you got the sales, you're trying to, like I said, I love that you're firing yourself mm -hmm. from everybody, uh, every, every mm -hmm. position. So yeah. again, just tip my hat to you. Like, well done. It's awesome to see Nick. Well, what kind of segue? Cause we've got to, I guess, talk about the program a bit. When was there like a moment that stands out in your mind that was like, man, I just need a mentor or coach. Like, was it did you come on board for the speed was it for the knowledge were you continually bumping your head up against this elite issue or maybe the teams i have this part-time how do i get over these part-time summer workers how do i go get year-long employees like kind of what was the moment and why why did you do it yeah so i can tell you exactly uh when i decided that i needed something more so i've i've been a, like a long time listener to the podcast i've I've listened to probably every episode. I mean, definitely until up until I did the coaching, I listened to every episode and I was always out doing the work. And I remember I was cleaning a deck and it was like getting late in the day and I was listening to another one of the podcasts and like always trying to implement too at the same time. Like obviously Gee. like it's, it's a lot of work, but, but I was just listening and like there wasn't enough change. Uh, but there still was a lot of help from the podcast. So I just thought, like, what if I, you know, I was able to sort of double my business by listening to a free podcast. So what if I actually, you know, went into the program and and sort mm -hmm. of actually got mentorship, mentorship from you guys? So like that's sort of when I thought, like, OK, I, if I'm getting so much value from something for free, like. I should actually invest into it. And, uh, and yeah, since then it's just been well worth it. So that's sort of when I realized I needed coaching, it wasn't necessarily that I thought I needed this one, but then just from realizing that the podcast was so helpful, I was like, yeah, let's just do it. Yeah. I love that. Love that, Nick. Yeah, And guys for everybody kind of thinking, or, or like, if anybody knows Alex or Mosey, you know, Craig, you guys are good friends now. It's hilarious. You guys have a bromance. Uh, it's hilarious. <laughs> I think yeah. Craig, I think you joined before Craig. I, I think like, I think no, over I, before, or was it after? Well, we'll see. So I, yeah, I remember I started and then like, I, I had to stop for a bit cause I was away. That's right. Yeah. And that, I think Craig might've joined then. Yeah. Yeah. When I was away. Yeah. So maybe I did start before. Yeah. But it was like yeah. around the same time. Yeah. Cool. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Around the same time. Cause it was almost like you two were, have been speaking before the program. Uh, cause the questions, <laughs> the, the doubts, the, you know, Hey man, I get the whole coaching thing. I like for um, all these kind of different things, but it's just like, man, I don't know. 
uh, and it's a big leap of faith. So it's just, I was like, maybe these two guys are like both Canadians, both young guys, both absolute studs. Maybe these guys mm -hmm. knew each other <laughs> beforehand and were chatting it out. But uh, no, it's kind of, it's, it's been, like I said, just a phenomenal journey uh, to see, man. And how is coaching? What you mentioned wasn't, you weren't like, I guess you, you had to learn, but what you've mentioned more is like mindset stuff. It's just firing myself from every position, kind of really getting off the tools. It's all mentioning of, of mindset. How has coaching shifted Nick Presenhammer's mindset when it comes to business or even life in general? Yeah. So um, it's like, I'll, I'll be honest. Like I don't really think about the actual cleaning anymore at all. Whereas like last mm -hmm. year, it was all about like, just, yeah. How, okay, I got to fix this thing on the truck. Like I gotta, you know, this has to be more efficient. Obviously like efficiencies like that is still a big part of it, but I just mean like my head is totally out of like the cleaning side of it. It's all about like trying to manage people and, and then manage like the numbers with the business. Cause that's all it is at, you know, mm -hmm. a certain point, you just got to look at the numbers and grow there. So yeah, I would say, sorry, what was the question again? Like, yeah, no, it's, it's a, well, I think you've already answered it. My friend, how has coaching shifted your mindset? Uh, yeah, sounds like to me yeah. tools focus on the work which i mean we were at the huge convention not to call anybody out but man i spoke to hundreds of business owners and 90 percent of them are focused on in the business on the tools the mm -hmm. equipment i need to have the best this that they're not focused on numbers managing a team which is all what and you were there tommy Mello talked about right and this mm -hmm. guy's doing 250 million way above anybody uh, that the, mm -hmm. the, that I know, right? That, that, that we've been able to coach. So you're on the right path. If you, mm -hmm. if Tommy, if that's all Tommy thinks about his management <laughs> profitability, mm -hmm. uh, that again, guys, if you're listening, that should be kind of like that light bulb moment for you. Maybe the deck moment, like it was for Nick. Of mm -hmm. I'm just got to change. Whether it's with us or somebody else, like take some action, uh, mm -hmm. regardless like, of the stuff. Yeah, because like the way I think of it is is like so we have like a big goal in our company to you know make it like multiple multiple like millions is sort of what mm -hmm. we're what we're planning on and i think of it when i'm at that stage am i going to be thinking about you know that one window that we missed or like you know something wrong with like our squeegees like no like it's it's everything that it's just like when you listen to Tommy's podcast, like he's not talking about anything with the garage door. It's all about managing people about the numbers, all that. And that's where like my head's going to be at when I'm there. And so mm -hmm. that's why, like, why not think of that now and just focus on that and try and have people like, cause you can pretty much hire everything out for like 20, $25 an hour in the business. Right. So why not do that? And then, just focus on like the bigger picture stuff and and yeah this is mm. this is everything you guys talk about and it just yeah it makes so much sense in the end but yeah it's it's not about the the dirty window necessarily it's it's more about the the numbers and just managing everything yeah totally man totally and i guess you can answer the next question too if like what is a, a stereotypical day in the life of Nick, like if I was to take a video camera, we're going to film a, a YouTube vlog. Uh, what does that look like? You know, it, it sounds like to me, managing of people, uh, making sure the sales are getting done. Uh, just making sure the business is running smoothly while focusing on where we're going, keeping that bigger, bigger picture in mind. Mm -hmm. Yeah, totally. Yeah. yeah. So it's, yeah. Morning. Like we have uh, a huddle, like all the guys will come in in the morning and we'll just go over some stuff we have a guy sort of managing production now so he's able to take on like all the questions and that sort of stuff i will just focus on like things like just there's a lot of small stuff that i like to mention um just like like we have like different things we do for marketing that i need to like make sure the guys are taken care of i mean you know like our five rounds or yard signs that sort of stuff um and then yeah anything that like if we have to, maybe I'll have to talk with one of the guys, you know, make sure everything's good. And then after that, they'll go out for the day and, and we try to keep all the calls to, to Drew's his name, like he'll sort of handle all the production issues. And then I'll just kind of focus on bigger stuff. Like Dave sort of said, like, I should always be thinking of like two, three months down the road. And so that's sort mm -hmm. of like right now, for example, like I'm working on 
uh, getting our stuff designed for like Christmas lights coming up and then maybe some snow removal we might do in the winter. Um, mm. Like just sort of thinking ahead and then also managing, like there's always stuff that comes up, you know, with the office, like she might need some help with a certain quote. That's like a little bit different or, uh, mm-hmm. or the guy doing sales, like he needs some advice and, and it, yeah, it's just sort of like, it's like managing, it's managing mm-hmm. everything basically sort of thing. And, and yeah, like, and then I'll have some calls. I'm, I'm always trying to stay on the coaching calls and, and then have calls with other people too, uh, meeting other business owners. And uh, yeah, that's sort of like a, a day in the life and then making sure everyone gets home on time too. That's big. Yeah, man. Uh, employee centric, customer driven. And I heard this quote, managing... If you can learn how to effectively manage manage people, you will be paid millions of dollars just to do that one skill. So guys listening, we get again caught up in, oh, I freaking power wash three homes today. I'm freaking the king or I mowed 12 lawns today. I'm the shit. It's like, yeah, you did a good job, but there are much harder things. And you said entrepreneurship is challenging. There are much harder things than mowing a freaking lawn or becoming the best window cleaner. Like to effectively manage people like Nick is working towards that, you, the reward, the the risk to reward, if you will, is much greater, much higher. So I would even challenge anybody listening, move out of your comfort zone, move to harder stuff because you shouldn't be focused on becoming the best window cleaner you should be focused on empowering how you can train the best window cleaners to clean the window. That should be the focus. And that's going to take decades in order to do. Last question, Mm -hmm. Nick. What would be, I guess, uh, this question I'll kind of segue with too. What you were there, you're on the fence, all these thoughts. What would you tell somebody who's sitting on the fence right now with hiring a business coach in general? It doesn't even have to be us. And then do you have any last pieces of advice that you would give to other home service business owners uh, or other business owners in general, checking in, checking this out, watching this? Mm-hmm. Yeah. So um, first off, so someone on the fence, uh, I would say like back to my first piece of advice is like, you just got to jump in. Like when you're starting, like you just got to jump in and do it. Like mm-hmm. when you realize you kind of, you plateau and like, look, everyone's gonna have a moment or a time in their business where it's like how do i get to the next level and like you can figure it out like there is ways without coaching to figure it out you you know you just got to do it and eventually it can work out but like why not invest into like yourself and then just get the answers right away like it's like Mm -hmm. this program like you guys there's so many guys who have already done it like it's just the answers are out there and they're not that hard. It's just, it takes a little bit of work to do, you know, Mm -hmm. like it, it's not like, it's not very intelligently hard. It's just difficult. You know, you just got to put in the work and do it, but yeah, to not do coaching and wanting to get to like that next level, like, especially if your goal is like rapid growth, like you can grow 10% each year without coaching. Like if, if you want to do that, that's fine. But like, if you really, want to make it to that next level um yeah i would say it's just it's one of those things you kind of just got to jump into and Mm -hmm. yeah justify it but um yeah it's like nothing's gonna change if you don't make a decision you know Mm. i'm gonna have to steal that line come on now (laughs) nothing's gonna change if you don't make a decision Mm -hmm. man that's gold because like on the sales training man and what i've kind of deduced with communication and, and selling if you will, is people, you can remove everything. I think the core of this is exactly what you said. People don't want to make a decision because they don't want to be wrong. And obviously nobody wants to get taken advantage of, but people just don't like to be wrong. I think that that's kind of the core and the essence. And that goes right to your point, Nick. You just got to freaking make the decision, regardless of what the decision is and go for it and ask yourself, think, What's the net positive? What's the net negative? What's the risk staying where I'm at? What's the risk with taking that leap of faith and implementing it and moving forward, man? Love that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So Any... I guess yeah. last piece of advice. Yeah. I do. Um, yeah. I would say 
I would say, and this is something that I learned this year is like, when you're growing, you're going to be like uncomfortable. And, and if you're not uncomfortable, then you're not growing. And like the more uncomfortable, obviously it has to be justified. Like, you know, don't go into huge debt or whatever, but you know, like, yeah, if, if you're going to make a leap, it's, it's going to feel like shitty at first, but uh, sorry, I don't know if I can swear on the Funny, you, you, It's but, all good, brother. <laughs> Let her fly. But, uh, but yeah, that, that's what, that's what I would say. And that's something that I really realized this year. And that's what coaching really helped me with was it was like, I would freak out about a decision like, Oh my God, like I have to hire, I have to like, for example, this year, like starting out the year, like we had like two, three ish guys like last year and like students, not, it wasn't like a huge team and it weren't really full-time guys. And so going into this year, there's still snow on the ground. And my coach is telling me like, you gotta, you gotta hire like four or five guys right now. And I've never had that amount of guys on payroll, no jobs booked. Like, of course we knew jobs were going to come in and we have people that like past clients that we call and stuff. So it wasn't like our first year. Right. But but still, it's like, yeah, it, it it I was I was terrified, and like I'm still terrified, you know. But now I know it's just part of the process, and and so I don't really, I just I try not to think of the problem, just think of the solution because there always is one if there's a problem, and that's what someone told me recently, and it makes a lot of sense. So, mm-hmm. so yeah, that's that's my last piece of advice. Just yeah, yeah. you're either growing or you're dying, and growing is uncomfortable. Yeah, I love that because once you solve one problem you find the solution and then another problem arises and this, and everybody knows this, this is life. And that was kind of the piece of advice your dad gave you, right? It's like, it's going to be a, there's a lot more reward, but in order for something to be more rewarding, (laughs) you have to go through, and I'm going to even follow up on your language. You have to go through a lot of shit (laughs) Mm -hmm. in order to get there. Uh, So Nick, where can people connect with you? Where can people find you? If for example, somebody's listening to, uh you and they're like man i really like this guy i would love to get my house clean by kind of what's your website how how can they give a contact like how can they contact you man and and if you want this is uh, totally up to you what's the best way for somebody to connect with the the man himself nick yeah absolutely so um yeah don't be afraid to reach out I'm, i'm always open to that you can hit me up on my personal number it's uh 226-332-6375 uh, Gladiator Pro Wash is the company name. So if you just type in uh, www.gladiatorprowash.ca, um, that's where you can find our website. Uh, we're on Instagram, uh, Facebook. Just type in the name and you'll see it. Um, yeah, no TikTok. Maybe one day. Oh. Uh, <laughs> yeah, maybe one day. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so, but yeah, the, like you can reach out if if you have any questions at all. Like that's a big thing too. Like you'll see guys that are, have made it far that they're always open to talk and and that's that's huge because all you got to do is ask and people will give you the answers Mm -hmm. just like tommy mello said his uh, favorite word in the world is ask right on stage Mm -hmm. at the huge go for no (laughs) exactly exactly brother (laughs) well nick i greatly appreciate your time man so good to catch up with you uh guys as always um if you're struggling with your business like do what Nick did, do what uh, Craig did, do what hundreds of others have done, at least schedule a call because I can't guarantee. And Nick, I told you this from the get go. I don't know if we can help you, man. And we got to figure out if we like each other. Cause if I don't like it. We're just not going to work together. And if we can't help you, I'm not going to get you into something you don't need. Right. So guys like take that leap of faith. Literally it's a friggin' phone call, half an hour phone call. You're not going to be hard sold as some people will. Nick, were you, were you hard sold by me? Like were you pre- no, no, pressured no. into this? No, <laughs> no, 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 Give you, no. Exactly. Give you the relevant information for you to make the best informed decision for you to move forward, whether that's yes or no. doesn't really matter to me. Uh, let's just get you the help that you need. So uh, Nick, uh, everybody hit up, hit up Alec or hit up uh, Nick uh, on his website. You can contact him as well. I appreciate your time, Nick. It was uh, so good. To, so good to speak with you and catch up. Yeah. Thanks, man. Good talking. You as well, man. Take care. Take care, everybody.